Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord send you peace and give you joy in your heart. And may your heart always be thankful and grateful for the blessings that you have. Today's message is entitled, The Joy of Thanksgiving. This Thursday, we will celebrate Thanksgiving. It's a time of family and close friends, lots of food, talking, laughing, having a good time. It's a time to remember to be thankful. It's a good thing for us to give thanks. Having a thankful heart or having a grateful heart has its benefits. And God expects us to be thankful. Matter of fact, God commands that we be thankful. Please turn with me to Psalms 100 and we'll read the whole Psalms, verses 1 through 5. And we're going to be reading from the King James Version today. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God, and it is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. If you would notice at the top of your Bible, at the very top of that, that, that verse or that Psalms that we just read, Psalms 100, it says, a Psalm of Thanksgiving or a Psalm of giving thanks. In other words, it is a song, a musical composition focused on giving thanks to God. The word Thanks, right here, this Hebrew word is toda, which means thank offering or thanksgiving. This psalm is really a confession or a personal song of praise and thankfulness or thanksgiving to God. We're thankful for what he has done for us. This Hebrew word that is translated, make a joyful noise, means to shout. Like you're at a football game and your team just scored the winning touchdown. Or you're a soccer fan like me. And your favorite striker has just put the ball in the back of the net in the 90th minute to win the World Cup. You shout. You shout for joy. It's the same shout that Joshua told the Israelites to implement after marching around Jericho. It's the same shout that is used in Psalm 47, verse 1. It says, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. It is not a distinguishable sound in this case. It's the shout of of joy. It's a sound of victory. It's a call to worship and to give thanks for everyone. Because look, the very next verse that the psalmist says after he commands the people to shout, he said, all the earth. This means everyone, every single soul that has ever been born, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye people, all ye lands, all of you, make a joyful noise, shout. And then it goes on, verse two, serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. It's not just for the Israelites. It's not just for Christians. It's all the earth, every single soul. You are to be thankful. You are to be joyful unto the Lord. Psalms 150 verse 6 says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. 
We are to serve the Lord our God with gladness, a glad heart, a grateful heart, a heart of thanksgiving. We are to come into his presence with singing because it was God who created us, created us in his own image. We are not a self-made people. We are the sheep of his pastures. He loves us and cares for us. And he is faithful even when we are unfaithful. And all he wants is our obedience and our gratitude, our thanks. Therefore, we should give thanks to God for all he has done for us and for who he is. The Lord is a great God. But you know what? God wants us to take it a step higher. He wants us to go a little deeper. He wants us to dig in farther. He wants us to not only give him thanks, but he wants us to live a life of gratitude. He wants us to live like we're thankful for life. He don't want us walking around with, with these long faces and these subtle looks. He wants us to have joy in our hearts. He wants us to have thankful for things that we enjoy. Do you enjoy things? Be thankful for those things that you enjoy. Thankful for the things we take for granted. We take for granted things like family, close friends, the job that you have. Don't complain, be thankful. Be thankful for the food that we eat. God, or uh, Jesus, when he was on earth, he never ate one bite of food without first giving thanks for it. Do you give thanks? Even when you're at a restaurant and people are looking, are you grateful that you're able to go to a restaurant and order food and eat it and enjoy it and pay for it? Many people can't. So if Jesus gave thanks for food, even when he was feeding the 5,000, he first gave thanks. Should we do any less? I read this quote by William Arthur Ward. He said, and I quote, feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it, end of quote. Well, I believe that that says it all. First of all, you have to take time out of your life to go to work in order to make money, in order to purchase this present. Then you have to take more time out of your, your life to go buy the present, wrap the present, and then after all of that, you turn around and not give the present. Why would you hold on to something that has cost you so much? Showing or expressing gratitude costs you nothing, but it is so meaningful to those who receive it. Somebody opens a door for you, say thank you. Or if they hold the door for you, say thank you. Gratitude. It's about gratitude. You've heard this or that is a thankless job. And many times it's not. It's just that people do not know how to show their gratitude. They, they, they're thankful. They just don't know how to show it. Showing or expressing gratitude is different than just saying thank you. Words are a lot cheaper than actions. Jesus said, quote in Isaiah, Matthew chapter 15, verse 8, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. You see, lip service is cheap and can be insincere. Or, at the very least, it can come across as insincere. But when you live a life of gratitude, you will experience the joy of thanksgiving. It will keep you humble before God. Because now your mind, your carnal nature, will not begin to believe or think that it's all about you. You're thankful to God. You, you now don't believe that. You did it. I did it. 
It's your plans. It's your action. It's your persistence that got you where you're at. You're the man. You're the woman. Look. Look at what God told the Israelites in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11 through 18. He said, take care lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes, which I command you today. He said, be very, very careful not to forget the Lord your God. God considers it an insult when, when you forget or you have this short-term memory and do not keep his commandments or obey his rules or observe his statutes. He is not interested in your sacrifices or your prayers when you're disobedient because it's better to obey than to sacrifice. See? It shows that you're dependent on God. You're thankful to God. Verse 12. Verse 12 says, Least when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied and all you have is multiplied. In other words, when you begin to prosper, your business is finally beginning to bloom. Your clientele is, grow, is growing substantially. You, you get clients every single day. You can, own, you can hardly keep up with all of the orders that you're getting in. You're selling, 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 selling. People are buying, 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 buying. There's no need to beg the Lord your God to prosper you anymore. For your business is doing more than you thought it could. It's exceeding all your, your greatest grandeur thoughts. Now, you don't have time to gather in family worship anymore because you're too busy. You just can't find the time to get up and pray anymore because you have to go to work. There's lots of stuff to do. There's a lot of plans to be made. I have so much to do. I can't make it into church today, but maybe next week. And definitely, I am going to make it to at least one Christmas program this year. Let me just tell you right here, God is not interested in your scraps. He is a mighty conqueror. He's an awesome king. He's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. There's no one like him and there is none beside him. He is the almighty God. He is not interested in your scraps. So after God has blessed you and prospered you, you, well, let's pick it up in verse 14 and let God speak for himself. Verse 14. Then your heart will be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness and its fiery serpents and, and scorpions, thirsty ground where there was no water, who brought you water out of the flinty rock who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and test you to do you good in the end. So let's just stop right there for a moment. Do not let Satan, that old devil, convince you that you're going through these hardships because God hates you, because God does not like you, because God is punishing you. Do not let him persuade you that God has forgotten you because you just got laid off or that the fiery serpents and those scorpions are snapping at your heels and are blocking your way. Do not let him deceive you like that. Do you suppose that, that, that God has forgotten about you? Do what you're supposed to do. Keep on doing what it is you, God called you to do. Continue to pray. Continue to seek. Continue to worship Almighty God. Continue to offer thanks offerings. Vote Bible, not party or personality. Stand for the heart of God because when you do, God will see your desire for doing what is right and accept your thanks offering. 
So do not get caught up in the lies. The devil is a liar and the father of lies. Do not fall for his lies. On to verse 17. Beware lest you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. This is pride. This is when pride sets in and takes over your heart. When you stop being thankful, when you stop being grateful to God for what he has done for you. It is by his power that he has given you that great wealth. Verse 18. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. And he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day. God wants to confirm his covenant with you. He wants to bless you. He wants to heal you. He wants to show you great and mighty things that you don't even know. Just let him. Paul showed us a three-strand cord that, that is not easily broken in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. He says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. There it is again. God wants us to be thankful and to give thanks at all times and in all circumstances. See, Verse 16 says, rejoice always. Rejoice at all times and in all situations, not just when the sun is warm on your face and the wind is at your back, but even when the rain is coming and it's pouring down and you don't even have an umbrella. Give thanks. Rejoice even to the confiscation of your goods as the early Christians did. For great is your reward. Verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. That does not mean that you only pray when you need something or when you're going through difficult times and when, when hardship is coming upon you, then you decide to pray, you decide to, to cry out to God in your times of trouble. Using God as a get out of jail free card, it just doesn't work. God wants you to pray without ceasing. Verse 18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This is the crush of the whole matter. Giving thanks. The act of thanksgiving. Again, we don't wait for everything to go right to give thanks. We don't stop giving thanks because life has thrown us a curveball. We give thanks in all things and in all situations and in all circumstances. Because to give thanks is the will of God. Therefore, be thankful and enjoy the benefits of thanksgiving. David felt so strongly about giving thanks that he assigned a portion of the Levites to give thanks exclusively. You don't believe me? Watch First Chronicles chapter 16. Verse 4, then he appointed a family of the Levites as ministers before the ark of the Lord to invoke, to thank, and to praise the Lord, the God of Israel. That is another three-strand cord that is not easily broken. Invoke, to invoke the name of the Lord our God means to bless to call those things that are not as if they were, to lay hands on the sick and they will recover, to drive out demonic spirits and to cast out evils and unclean spirits. Jesus gave us the authority to use his name. So one, to invoke, two, to give thanks, and three, to praise the Lord. Normally, the first thing that is listed or the first thing that is done is the most dominant or the most important. So what was the first thing that David did? Well, look at verse 7. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 7. Then on that day, David first appointed that thanksgiving be sung to the Lord by Asaph and his brothers. 
It is a joy to give thanks to the Lord. It's a joy to live a life of thanksgiving. You are not living a life of thanksgiving when you let little things irritate you, when you hurt the ones that you love for no reason, when your face displays an unapproachableness like a neon sign blanking. Don't talk to me. Don't approach me. Get away from me, donkey. You're not living a life of thanksgiving when you look around at others and, and, and see that, that you don't have as much as they do. And then a little bit of envy begins to creep in. And when you can't rejoice with a brother or a sister who God has blessed, when you can't do things like that, it is not from a thankful heart. John Eckhart and his book, Destroying the Spirit of Rejection, said, and I want to quote, Webster's defines covetous, the active form of covetousness, as feeling or showing a very strong desire for something that you do not have, and especially for something that belongs to someone else. Covetousness is about being dissatisfied with what you have, and it often gives place to jealousy, envy, and even murder. An ungrateful heart can open the door to the spirit of rejection and many other spirits, end of quote. When you are not thankful for what God has given you, pride and covetousness will begin to creep into your life and it will consume the blessing God has blessed you with. Eckhart then cites Romans chapter 1, verse 21. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Now, I want to point this out. The word futile means to be actively deceived. And in this case, to be actively deceived in your thinking. The problem is you don't even realize it because you are deceived. People, politicians can tell you anything and as long as it sounds good or it's what you want to hear, you believe it because there is no discernment because you have become futile in your thinking. And it all comes from a heart of ungratefulness. When you think that you should have what somebody else has, or when you think that you're owed something for not even doing anything, people have become entitled. You see, when you refuse to be thankful, or when you give half-hearted half thanks to God, your heart eventually becomes foolish and it begins to darken. It will lead you to greater and greater rebellion and dissatisfaction that could lead you even into murder if left unchecked. Thanklessness is the first step of falling away from God. When you are down and depressed, when things are looking dark and gloomy, bring a sacrifice of thanksgiving and see your whole outlook on life begin to turn around. Your whole worldview will begin to change because now you are stroking that heart of thanksgiving. You're offering the thanks sacrifice. It is the joy of thanksgiving. It's not the resentment thereof, but it's the joy of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving can keep you from straying off the path of holiness and keep you from so much pain and hurt. Just be thankful. I want us to, 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 to read the last two verses in our scriptures. We bring it in for closing. Psalms 100, verse 4 through 5. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Before we can enter into God's presence, we must first come 
in through the gate and then into the court and then into the holy place and then into the holy of holies where is the very presence of God is. But the name of the gates is Thanksgiving. That is its name, the gates of Thanksgiving. It all starts with giving thanks. It all starts with Thanksgiving. When you are feeling down and out, when you're overwhelmed, when your mind is going here and there and everywhere and you can't seem to control the thoughts and your foot almost slips, give a thanks offering to the Lord. When you feel like there is no one in your corner, when you feel like you're the only one left like, like Elijah did, start with thanksgiving. Just start thanking God. Start in your heart. Then let it come out of your mouth. Let it be vocalized. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And thank you for all you've done for me. The scripture we just read said that David, the man after God's own heart, started with joyful thanksgiving. It will lead you right into praise. And before you know it, you are standing in the very presence of Almighty God. Because that is the path. But it all starts with a thank you. Paul wrote to the Corinthian church explaining that it's not the spiritual that was first, but the natural that was first. You got to open your mouth. When we apply this to ourselves, we ought to be thankful for what others have done for us. Just saying thank you is a small thing, but it has huge rewards. It has huge benefits. We should be thankful to our parents, siblings, our family, friends, co-workers, our neighbors. We should be thankful to our spouses. Who stands by us more than spouse? And most of all, we should be thankful to Jesus. It does not matter how small or how big. It does not matter if we think that they did it all for the wrong reasons. It does not matter. Like at the mall, if someone lets you out, don't say, oh, they want to let me out because they wanted my parking space. Be thankful no matter what the perceived reason is. Even if that reason is true, even if it's factual, be thankful anyway. Begin to foster an attitude of thanksgiving. Be grateful and it will begin to manifest in the spiritual and will not be just mere words that we utter out of politeness. It will become a part of who you are and you will begin to enjoy the joy of thanksgiving. Although the scriptures are all through the scriptures, God instructs us to give thanks and to be thankful. It is not for no reason that God did that. It is not for no reason that he said, be thankful. Offer the, the sacrifice of thanks. So let us make a resolution that from this Thanksgiving onward, we will begin to learn to be thankful. Thankful for what we have. Thankful for where we are. And thankful for what God has done for us and what others have done for us. Salvation is the biggest, the greatest thing that we should be thankful for. Jesus paid the ultimate price for us because our debt to God was so huge that we were unable to pay for it. But God, in his great mercies, paid the debt himself and then canceled our IOU to him. Now, we, in turn, because we are so grateful to God, should cancel others like IOUs to us. Somebody has wronged us, forgive them. Somebody talked bad about us, forgive them. Lord, they know not what they do. So let me ask you, have you had 
your IOUs paid for and canceled by Jesus? If not, why don't you let this Thanksgiving be the opportunity for you to say thank you, Jesus, by accepting his free gift of salvation. He is standing at the door and he's knocking. Would you let him in? He's standing, holding out his hand to you. Will you not take it? He is longing to hold you in his arms and to comfort you. Will you not let him do that today? If you want to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Help me to be thankful. Help me to be grateful. Give me a thankful heart, Lord, and help me to offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Help me to forgive others like you've forgiven me with a thankful heart. Lord Jesus, I accept your free gift. I accept it now. And I'm thankful for it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What I want you to do is to get a Bible. You gotta get a Bible. You gotta get into God's Word. You gotta read it. You gotta learn it. You gotta hide it away in your heart so that you might not sin against Him. Get a highlighter. Highlight those verses, those promises. Stand on those promises. God will honor every single one of His promises that He's made to you. You can take that to the bank. You do not need to be ashamed. You do not need to be afraid. You do not doubt in your heart. God will honor His Word. Find yourself a Bible-believing church, one that teaches the correct things, teaches that there's a right way and a wrong way, teaches that you cannot be a friend of the world. There's some things that are wrong, no matter if government says that they're right. They are wrong in God's sight. They're wrong, no matter who says they're right. Join that church. Be discipled in that church. And when Jesus comes back, and I believe that he's coming back really, really soon, he'll find you doing what it is that you should be doing. And he said, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now enter into the joy of the Lord. And there you'll be with him forever and ever and ever. What a glorious day that will be. But what a sad and dreadful day for others who do not know Jesus or who have waited too long or who chose the wrong side. Do not let things here hinder you. Do not let things that, 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 that society is trying to push trip you up. Believe God. This is not an ancient, outdated book. It is what we will be judged on. Read it. Know it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy Thanksgiving from my family to your family. The Lord bless you. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.